looks like an Ophiroid Brittle Star. Come a little wide there, please, Dave. Full wide there, please. Coming up. Jake, you want to come up a little there, please? Little sponge checking out. Oh, yeah. Hiding. Our OV pilots, can you answer a question? Sure. We had someone asking about the use of the word delta, what it ref references or means. Yeah, the, the delta is, uh, we call it, well, it's a delta depth. It's one of our readout uh, measurements on our um, pilot screens, our, our GUI. Um, and it basically measures the vertical uh, Z distance, uh, or, or delta Z, between both vehicles in the water column. So uh, right now we have a delta of about 18 meters. Um, so Argus is 18 meters above Hercules in the water column. Jake, can you bring your head to 210, please? 210. Thank you. We have a viewer asking what we are looking for on this expedition. We're looking for two things. We're looking for rocks with this iron manganese crust, and we're collecting those along a transect, and then we're also documenting the biodiversity along the transect and collecting some specimens that have been requested by scientists. And a viewer asked, how many sponge species live in this water, these waters? That's a great question, and that's one of the questions we are attempting to answer by sampling along this transect. Randy, does it look like it's flattening out here? Terrain-wise? Yep. Uh, yeah, so it look, I just bumped us a little bit to get to the top of this ridge, and now I'm just attempting to follow it uh, along this 225-ish, um, uh, uh, unless you'd like uh, anything else. I no, no, I think along the top is needs to be. It's uh, a white coral. <laughs> I was going to oh. give us a scientific <laughs> name, but then I was like, you know. Did you want to look at it there? Yeah, I'd love to look at it. <laughs> It'll help Rennie identify it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think it's the Ramula Lagarja Militaris again. Classic. Sarah's on it. Classic. Only because I was told by Steve to start capitalizing Ramula Lagarja. <laughs> <laughs> All right there, Dave, go ahead and push on in, please. Is there some funky thing sitting on it? Some funky thing? Uh, oh, those white bits. Uh, oh, the barnacles? Yeah. Oh, oh the no. Yeah, they have little feathery things. Oh, what's that guy? <laughs> yeah, in the left corner? What's that? Yeah, those yeah, are the barnacles. The Barnacles and crinoids and is that a crinoid on the right? Can yeah, you tell? the lower right. Okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead and come forward there, please, Dave. A couple of our viewers are asking if there's a way to date the dead sponges. I know that Megan has told us there's not a great way to, to get an estimate of age on a living sponge, but anybody know anything about dating the dead ones? Uh, do you mean how old they... I think there's a way to date when they died using carbon dating, but uh, perhaps, but how old they are, uh, I don't think there's a way to to measure that. Like, how long they were alive for. And Dating the Dead would make a great band name. Uh, <laughs> dating Dead Sponges? Awesome app. <laughs> Would Dating the Dead be a Grateful Dead cover band? <laughs> One of our viewers is asking what, why we need the rocks in the specimens. The specimens are going to Harvard Museum, is that correct? Or yeah, yeah, Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology. And it will be available to any researcher who needs to use them for their research. Rocks will go to the Marine Geosamples Lab at uh, University of Rhode Island, and again, Researchers can access them, kind of like a, a library for samples, and request them and uh, use them for research. If you were asked, are there animals that you know are there, but we never get to see because of the ROVs, they move away from the ROVs, and that's one of the uh, values of the eDNA samples you take from the water be able to know who is there even if we don't see them. Kind of get a sense of the 
terrain from looking at the volcanic landforms. When we're going up the slope, all these pillows were kind of extending down slope, and now they seem to either not have a direction or flattened out a bit. If this were uh, kind of much younger or brand new volcanic terrain, it'd be super shiny because the lava, when it hits the seawater, quenches really quickly before it has to, a chance to make crystals, so it ends up as glass, and uh, lights of the ROV would re reflect back off that glass and look really nice. Would the entire um, thing be glass or just the outsides? Just the very outside, maybe like up to a, a centimeter or two. Okay. And that glass is pretty fragile. So, you know, once it's a uh, hundred years old or a thousand years old, a lot of that glass is gone either. Does it turn to clay? Some of it alters, alters but it also kind of spalls off as well. Okay. We have a viewer asking if overfishing in the more shallow part of the ocean um, could have impacts on this deep ocean habitat. Um, not sure the answer to that, but there's direct impacts on the deep ocean habitat from fishing as well. So seamounts, uh, not necessarily these, but, but others, uh, have kind of commercially valuable fish that, uh, are, are uh, extracted by dredging and so, uh, or deep net toes that can knock down these, uh, corals and sponges, which uh, take quite a long time to recover. Trawling, that's the word I was looking for. Greetings to the marine biology class in Connecticut who is watching. And their question was, does the ROV explore for 12 days straight, 24 hours a day? And typically, most of our dives will last about 24 hours. But we do need to bring the ROVs back to the surface to unload this, the samples. Should we go around and do introductions? We've been on on our shift for a little while. Yeah. My name is Lisa. I am a science teacher from Kansas, and I am um, acting as a science communication fellow. And encourage you to keep sending your questions in. I'm Jake Bonney, sitting in the <laughs> Argus seat, recent graduate of the University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography ocean engineering program this is my 96th i see what we're doing today <laughs> expedition now i i was doing someone else that's not i'm actually adam sewell i'm a no a, i'm adam sewell oh yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> all right jake you want to do me <laughs> yes hello I'm welcome adam to play along at home <laughs> yeah. to tell the truth <laughs> leader of the ocean exploration cooperative institute at the university of rhode island and professor Favorite, uh, favorite color? Favorite color is oh, purple. Man. Yep. <laughs> yep. And <laughs> I live in Cape Cod. There you go. Oh. My name is Jess Sandoval. I'm the <laughs> Hercules pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Just recently finished a PhD. Is it Freaky Friday? And uh, <laughs> I 
live in, currently live in San Diego. <laughs> Hi, my name's Renato Kane. <laughs> <laughs> my voice changed a little bit since last watch. <laughs> I am the navigator on the 8 to 12 watch, also avid mapper, and the hype train <laughs> starter entrepreneur with the uh, right conductor. 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 Yeah. conductor of the hype train. Conductor. As you can tell, I have a little bit of memory loss for, <laughs> for words right now. <laughs> and I also uh, like to give out puns that, you know, mm. I will secretly laugh at in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've left. So I can do Sarah as well. Well, what about Dave? I'm Dave, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you do Dave, yeah. There's so many um, voice changes. I'm sitting <laughs> in the video engineer chair. Um, Night, and I have some memory loss as well. I can't remember where I'm from, but I know I lived in Madison for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you designed this whole system, didn't you? I did. I did. I'm pretty sure you have Four. 40 years in the broadcast industry. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Bremer. I'm a <laughs> geologist at the University of uh, Wisconsin Madison, and uh, go Badgers. <laughs> <laughs> That's stereotypical, Dave. Just because she's over here eating cheese curds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh <the> yeah? <laughs> <laughs> There's some sort of gooey pink thing in front of us. Can we zoom on that? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to look at that. I'll just get us a better light. Oh, it's not gooey at all. It's a coral. What's it attached oh, to? Go ahead and push on there, please, Dave. Is it a sea pen yeah. or a coral, Rennie? Hey, that's a trick yeah. question. I think a sea pen is a coral. Yeah. Oh. Nice Looks try. Like <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> know. I was trying that on purpose. Arct octocoral of some kind. Yeah. Could be a sea pen. Can you pen? count eight? Is it an octocoral? Looks like. On my introduction for you, Remy, I should have said that you are a resident <laughs> marine biologist in this watch. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Steve in training. Yeah. Oh. All right, full white, please. Yeah, is that sheet flow or crust, do you think, Adam? Well, it, it's crust. It's definitely crusted. Jess, can you wag left a little bit? Yeah, sure thing. We're interested in that flat bit. Yeah, Raj. Go ahead and do a partial there, Dave. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's like the, it's interesting. Yeah, so the question is, is that a lava flow that's crusted or uh, these micronodules that have grown together, but difficult to tell. Kind of looks flowy, right? Or is it hard to tell? I think because you see it, uh, some of those other big rocks kind of embedded in it, that it's probably crust. Oh, Raj. Little pink thing. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh. See? Cute. Are you a biologist? Yeah. All right. Actually, I think Rennie did his PhD in little pink things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and come forward there, please, Dave. What university was that, Rennie? <laughs> <laughs> so close. So close to saying it again. Romila <laughs> <laughs> Gorgia. <laughs> no, 
I had a question about where I teach in Kansas. I teach at Lawrence High School in Lawrence, Kansas, home of the Jayhawks. Get the Jayhawks? What happened to the crusty, I mean, chesty lions? Well, the chesty lions, too. <laughs> What's Most it? people know us by Jayhawk basketball. Lion. It's her mascot. Like you've never heard of a chesty lion? I don't know. <laughs> we are the only chesty lions in the United States. I still don't know exactly what it means. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's open to interpretation. <laughs> but you can see Chesty in my Instagram takeover from yesterday. That's a funny name. We have a question about the composition of the sediment, Adam? Yeah, sediments here mostly uh, made of the shells and tests of dead critters that have rained down from the uh, upper ocean. Ooh, beautiful purple holothurian. I know. One of our viewers is asking if some of you would share the most unusual thing you've seen in the ocean. Good question. I once was in a submersible that, you know, with the kind of acryl clear acrylic sphere type, and a sea turtle landed on top of it and rode us up through the water. Wow. <laughs> that is not a lie. I have a <laughs> photo documentation. <laughs> It just settled, fact checkers? settled right on top. <laughs> How deep did you go? Uh, those subs only went to a thousand meters, uh, but Still. it picked us up somewhere on our ascent and just yeah. rode it for you know five really minutes. Cool. That's a question for the internet. How deep do sea turtles <laughs> go? Yeah. Is this our way to fact check him? Yeah. Hmm. Gotcha. Was his name Crush? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, is that was that a fish? Think so. Oh, look at that! Yeah, that's the uh, that cusk eel type of thing we've been seeing. I seem to remember something about the scales on its state? head being important. Scales or no scales? This one's just really lacking color. Yeah. Oh. Like, oh, now they can't see me. Interesting. Oh, right there, please. Sorry, Dave. One of our viewers ask, what will Seamount F be named? Right there on the Delta. Yeah, that's a great question. I'll have to stay tuned to find out. Uh, yeah, th it's actually quite a process to name a C4 or give a C4 feature a new name. Um, but if any of these are to be named, we would work with the uh, Papahana Makuakea National Marine Monument Cultural Committee, find a name that's uh, appropriate for the area and the cultural stewards of this uh, part of the ocean. This sponge is looking sad. 
Yeah, it's seen better up. days, hasn't it? Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. Is that the ET spun? Yeah, ET. Sad ET. Looks like there's barnacles on top of it already. Pull away there, please, Dave. Adam, how many how many uh, meters depth change are we going to be collecting rocks? Uh, on this dive, we're looking about every 300 meters of, of depth. And so that'll change in terms of how long it is between samples as we go on steeper, steeper and shallower slopes. But, uh, we started at around 3,300 meters, collected the last one at around 3,000. So look out for 2,700 as the next depth we would collect a rock at. Roger. like Ramilla gorgia militaris has been the dominant species on the lower slopes of these seamounts. We're getting a lot of questions from our viewers. Thank you for putting those out there. We'll try to answer as many as we can. So one person is asking if people can go into the ROVs, and they do not go into the ROVs. We send them down like diving robots, so we don't have to go into them. We heard a great presentation last night from Dr. Ballard about the history of diving in a submarine and where we've gone with that technology. Some of it seemed downright dangerous. Very. <laughs> <laughs> Luca in fifth grade wants to know when Hercules was made. Early 2000s, yeah. right? <coughs> yeah. 20 years ago almost. Something like that. And oh, the oh deepest five. Hercules has gone. Hercules can go to 4,000 meters, a little over 13,000 feet. And I believe our first dive of this expedition was almost at that depth. Another AT sponge here, right? Go ahead and do a partial there, Dave. Anybody rewatched ET recently? No, I've never. Oh, I, I have never seen ET. What? Uh, <laughs> I tried to get my kids to watch it, but they were like, "This looks old." Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, looks like a rock right next out. to me, huh? Something. Or I'm sure there'll be a remake soon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, probably. What is that hanging out in there? Is that one of those benthic tinafores? I think it's a shrimp. It is a shrimp. Shrimp. Oh yeah. Interesting. The screen closer to me looks much clearer than the one further away. Better one or two? <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh, uh, yeah, one or two. <laughs> Left? Right. Left, right. 
I go to the eye doctor a lot, so. <laughs> you do? I got eye doctor jokes for days. <laughs> <laughs> we had a question about how fast the ROVs are moving, and can they view that on the more data on the web page? I don't think we have speed over ground of the ROVs on Grafana, do we? I don't think so. No. Uh, you have push in there full, please? No, I, I think it's just ship. Yeah, we have the ship speed over ground, and then... A little shrimpy. Usually Argus is correlated with that, although a bit delayed, and then Hercules kind of can zoom around on its tether as it sees fit. But if you simply convert the latitude and longitude at one time to uh, x, y coordinates and then oh, do I that over and do? over, you right. should be able to calculate the speed. Simple as that. Can yep. we check the corals <laughs> to the left, Jess? If we oh, yeah, sure. One's in the upper left there. There were two small, um, yeah, to the left. These look like primnoids. Yeah, they yeah. do. Different than the ones we've been seeing, though. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. You just want to see the two in frame there? Yeah. Yep. They look the same, right? Same species? They do. There's one in the background that's different. The background one looks like the Militaris one, yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll have to get moving forward yep. again. That's fine. Thank Pull you. Pull right there, please, Dave. All right, and we have a lot of questions, so we'll answer as many as we can. Sorry if we don't get to yours. One viewer asked, are there different shifts? And yes, we... We are split oh. up into three shifts. We work four yeah. hours on, eight hours off, four hours on. For the person asking about speed, we're current, Hercules' speed is currently 0 0.4 knots. Just to give you a sense of how fast that is. And one knot is 1.1 miles per hour, for those of you who aren't familiar with knots. How come the abbreviation for knots is KN, but it's actually nautical miles? Why is it not NA? It's just an old sailor joke that went too far. <laughs> Can't. Now we're stuck with knots. Can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. <laughs> we had a great question about why the sponge is growing on a stalk like that, and they do that in order to get up into the nutrient flow so they can get more food. Great question. How about the largest uh, organism you've seen on a dive? Oh, well, I'm not going to win that one. <laughs> you all, any of you all see the the whale? That's me. Okay, all right. Uh, what was that about the whale? You, Did, were you, were you on, on that dive? dive? I, I was. was not there. I was there. Yeah. All right. I was always there. Adam. Randy saw a whale. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a question about it? Sorry. What's the, yeah, what's the largest? In, uh, what's the largest thing you've seen, animal-wise? Oh. Oh no, I was on for the whale fall, not the live whale. Oh, live animal? I saw a uh, sailfish, like a swordfishy looking thing. I saw an oarfish once. Ooh, Ooh. that was really cool. Those are huge. Yeah. It was just a silver glint. Can't those get up to like Pretty 20 long. feet long or something like that? Yeah. The largest thing we've seen on this expedition was the shark we saw when Hercules was recovered on the last dive. Yeah, I think it was an oceanic white tip.
Oh, uh, we also saw a big shark. pilot whale. whale, yeah. Oh, pilot whale. Pilot whale when we put the vehicles in. First launch, yeah. A question uh, from Wisconsin. How often do you see weird looking fish? Every day. <laughs> Keep watching. You'll probably see some too. Uh, some of those walleye are pretty weird looking though. You, you know. huh, yeah. There's a question in the science chat for you, Rennie. Where did you see the oarfish? I believe it was Revia Hegedo Islands. I don't remember which one. Or the depth. of our students from fifth grade is asking how many ROVs can we fit? And I assume they mean on the ship. And we currently have four, two diving and two on the deck. Have any of you ever seen an animal try to attack the ROVs? Mm. Push on in there, please, Dave. Uh, attack is... They're definitely the, curious, and they, yeah. they seem to get confused sometimes and just swim directly at us. <laughs> but, uh, Last expedition, we had a shark bite the tether between oh. Kirk oh. and Argus. A shark bite the tether? Yeah. What? Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Well, I wasn't on your watch. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Raj. Yeah. It's not like we tell you. Everything that happens. <laughs> what happens at twelve to four stays? On you yeah, think that like they you get just that? Make stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we don't tell you all the stuff we make up. Yeah. Okay. All right, what do we got Go here? Morella, oh. macro calyx is my best guess. Ah, Steve just put it in the chat. Bingo points for Sarah. You said that before <laughs> you saw <laughs> that. I wow. did. <laughs> holy moly! Is Norella a primnoid? Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna wait for Steve to answer before I respond to that. <laughs> you gotta get a private text from Steve. That's how I've been doing it up here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a Steve secret. Stop <laughs> texting Renny. <laughs> Clearly another Norella macrocalyx. I don't know if it's macro oh, yeah. if it has multiple branches. That's a oh. good question for Steve, though. When I say clearly, I mean, not so clearly. <laughs> it looks really <laughs> healthy, though. It does. It does. Yeah, I'm like, them in, please, Dave. like two rows of uh, stalks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Double. Double. Double rainbow. Double rainbow. That light pink either in it or on the other side. Does it look like uh, maybe anemones? Yeah, that are they do in look there. like anemones. Brittle stars. Nice polyp zoom. Did you say nice polyps? I said nice polyp zoom. Oh. <laughs> nice polyps. It is an arello, but the species is unclear. All right, go ahead and come partial wide there, please. We have a nice shot here. And full wide, please. Do some catch up. Yeah. That was oh. a big sponge. Woo. Wow. Wow. Well, interesting.
had a question about can anything live in the sponges besides shrimp and I actually asked Megan that question yesterday and she said um, you'll often find an association with sponges there could be sea stars brittle stars feather stars amphipods squat lobsters and some crabs And one of our uh, viewers is asking, what's the smallest animal you've seen? And I was in the wet lab and saw a tiny, cute little brittle star or sea star that they had found on a rock. It hitched her right up. One of our viewers is an artist, always looking for new animals to draw, and ask if there's a place where we post pictures for the public. And we sure do. If you go to our website and click on Gallery, you can see collections of photos, photo albums, and videos from past dives. And we'll be um, working on compiling those for the, this expedition as well. For those of you who just joined, this is going to be at least a 24-hour dive. The ROVs went into the water last night around midnight. One of the viewers asked if the corals or sponges can survive when they fall over. And didn't Megan talk about how sometimes they grow? I think what I remember hearing is that once they fall over, they've really kind of uh, left the buffet, so to speak. You know, they, they are not getting the same delivery of food, and so it's very hard to survive once they're lying down flat. The other two ROVs that are on the deck are Little Hercules and Atalanta. They won't be diving on this expedition, but they are on the ship with us. And one of our viewers asked if we have seen fish yet. Yes, we have. Keep watching and hopefully you'll see some as well. I think our favorite is the Tronoclops. 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 Uh, now I, you guys have screwed me up. I don't know what the... <laughs> Tronoclops, yeah. I don't know what it's called and it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Not to point fingers, but my <laughs> fingers are pointing to the front row. <laughs> <laughs>
Can you zoom on that star on the left? Star on the left, yeah, roger that. Good in there, Dave. Sorry, I'm just checking this relative to what folks have been interested in sampling. I don't think it's on the hit list. All right, go ahead and come forward there, please. We have a viewer who's asking why Atalanta is not called Little Argus, and can somebody talk about the tradition of naming of the ROVs? Yeah, so Bob likes to name them after Greek mythology, and uh, especially the story of the Argonauts, and apparently Atalanta was one of the, uh, she helped save Hercules, especially when he was going to get the Golden Fleece, and uh, kind of butchering that story, but that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much what I remember. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll take it. And I thought I heard somebody say every other one gets a female Fish, name. Chocolate. Is that correct? Ooh. I don't know about that, but he, Bob, also told me about the Golden Fleece. That the theory Could is, push that in there, please, Dave. They would get the fleece of, of the lamb, and then put that in the river, and then kind of pan for gold, right above it, and let the gold collect in the fleece mm -hmm. until it was golden. All right. All right. That little Someone who wanted a fish. Little there's little little there's little little oh, that's our clops. favorite. The young one too. Is his landing gear out? Back so cute. Such graceful swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> we oh no. Wow. Oh, here comes the <laughs> ground. Don't go back. This is a very sporadic swimmer, this guy. It's all part of his plan. <laughs> I know. Very evasive. Well, I'll leave him alone. One of our viewers ask how many different starfish we've seen. We have seen so many different species of sea stars. Lots of diversity. Not my favorite one yet. Rathbanaster. Rathbanaster. I haven't okay. seen it. Maybe the other watches have. Why is it your favorite? I like the name. Mm. 
Can you come up a bit there, Jake? You're off in the uh, weeds over there. Yeah. Here's a question from a viewer. Have any of you seen a squid on the dives? Oh, yeah, definitely. Usually when we recover or put in the vehicles. Rennie, your ship house is frozen again, I think. Roger that. I don't know why someone keeps doing that. Is that better? Yes. We have a viewer asking if we have found any new animals on this expedition, and that's a great question. That's to be determined. It's one of the reasons we're serving biodiversity here and taking some collections. But we don't have a whole lot of information about the deep sea. We're always adding to what we know. So chances are we will probably encounter something that has uh, still has not been named or has not been seen at this depth. Hi, everybody. Big Boss is here. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> hey, Allison. Oh, that last one was 210 again. And then two after that, zero. I'll go a little more uh, westward. Maybe just 215 or so. Roger. One of our viewers is asking what the distance is that we'll be transacting in blue water between the two summits. And according to our dive report, that's 3.7 kilometers. Yeah, then we, might, we might do a couple of jumps. There's one kind of long stretch. And then once we get closer to the summit, there's another one where we might transit for another 1.3 kilometers. It's about half the distance. Hard to go down slope. <coughs> One of our viewers asked if the light from the ROV has an effect on the marine life. And it seems like some of the organisms might be attracted to it and some of them might um, be startled by it and move away. Pretty interesting how different these seamounts have been from one another. From a geological perspective? Yeah, a, b a bit. I mean, I was, I mean the previous seamount was just fields and fields of nodules, right? Mm Do they look the same to you, Rennie? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're a little bit different. That's a good roll. Oh, yeah. Nice one. 
monitors are rolling too. <laughs> oh, and the winch box. Oh, now that's an important one. Yeah, we're not even really in the trough either. Just looking at out the based on looking out there. Renny Marlene was very concerned about your food this morning. She knows I don't eat breakfast. Well, <laughs> she had some sitting out for you and it rolled right <laughs> off the table. Oh. <laughs> uh, she she <clears throat> I hope she doesn't make breakfast every day. I've never eaten breakfast on the ship. <laughs> I didn't eat breakfast the other day, and she made me take double of everything at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> She's watching. Yep. Better look out. <laughs> Sleep always wins. Mm -hmm. We have a viewer asking if the fish at this depth are blind, or maybe they have limited vision. That's the wrong watch. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> From my understanding, they have um, photoreceptors, but they're very poor if they if they have photoreceptors. Um, so they, some of them are blind, and some of them just have really really bad eyesight. But you don't really need it when it's pitch black down here, except oh. if you want to see some bioluminescence, I'd assume. What does so. our resident marine biologist think, Rennie? Yeah, sounds right. Could be <laughs> left over from when it when these creatures came from the shallows and What did Steve say the other day? It's harder to lose DNA like Gen genetic genetic right. uh, evolution like, or uh -huh. Yeah, it's harder to lose genetic traits than yeah. gain them. That's the word I was looking for, traits. Yeah, Steve was talking about that in the context of the colors of um, sea cucumbers that we were seeing. Somebody was asking, yeah. why, why are they purple? Yeah. Yep. So a couple, couple of theories. One was that it could have been from when the shallower family members invaded the deep. Or that it was some um, kind of what was it a, like a warning chemical or something in them that just naturally has some pigmentation. Yeah, or something doesn't taste good to creatures that want to eat it. We have a question from a class. What's the biggest seamount that we are exploring or that we found? Anybody know offhand? The biggest seamount. The biggest of this chain. I don't even know the answer to that question. Do you have a way of finding out, Renny? I might. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to all of our viewers joining from their classroom. That's awesome. Your teacher is super cool to let you watch. Where are they joining from? I see a group from Ontario. Yep. See if we have we have someone from Carbondale, Illinois. Group someone from Tennessee. My home state. Awesome. Wisconsin. Go Badgers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Renny, you want to... What's up? My sonar screen. Can you just oh, cool. to, to not restart right now? I got an update for you. You can update it right now. <laughs> yeah. That one's such a...